Hi there. Dom and I have done a few videos before about a super simple, super cheap UPS system. But uh, we've had some time to finally finish it off. And I'd like to show you how it all works. Now the main idea of this was to power the essentials like CCTV, server and the wireless router through a power cut, short power cut, a couple of hours. With, um, with some of these SLA batteries we've got and obviously we can add more of these SLA batteries and it will extend the life of it as much as we like and they're very cheap, you can get them from uh, alarm installation people will sell them to you for about 50p each just the uh, old ones they've got because they're not certified to be using alarms anymore but they still work alright so uh, we'll show you around that now um, Hello guys, explosive discharge Today we've been finishing the UPS, as you've probably already seen. Um, so we're just going to show you it in a finished state. Just been on a 70 mile journey to pick up this little thing. It's, uh, how many watts is it? 600. 600, is it? Six, yeah, 600 watt. 600. Real, real, true sine wave. Like yeah, true, true sine wave. Oh, wait, no. Oh, well, it was only 25 quid. And uh, we've got some nice clips that we can cut off of it. There's a nice cable to wire up with. But uh, that'll be the replacement so we can power a little bit more off of it and uh, we don't have to worry about overpowering that little inverter. So we've got the mains coming in and that goes up to the UPS. Yeah. And this is a float charger we're just testing. And these are charge leads for the battery. I'm gonna move that power supply with the rest of the UPS up in the loft. That wire stubs you're just referring to is here and that comes in there, main supply as you can see, main supply and the UPS itself is run from this wire which goes in a loop over there for no reason to the relay here. Now the corner of this relay is powered by the mains so when the mains is on then uh, the output that goes to this socket on the side is from the mains. When the mains goes off, the coil will turn off and the switch will spring back to inverter power and then it will be the inverter connected to these two sockets. So that's the, uh, that's the outlet from the UPS. And from that we're running an external hard drive for doing backups. The Prusa box itself. And there's this other wire that comes down here. That goes back into the house and that feeds the router, broadband router. So we've still got wireless in a power cut and so this is still online in a power cut. And this is the new inverter in place, which is also labelled for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah. Um, this is going to be running all the time. Nothing is going to be actually, there's going to be no load on it, but it is going to be running all the time. How many watts is that? 600? This is a 600 watt, yeah. There you go. I'll show you what the UPS itself actually looks like. There's the two clamps from the inverter there. We were going to wire them straight into the earth block that we're using, but it's a bit easier like this, just in case we do ever want to pull it out or swap it out. Oh, wow, look at that. This is a craft gift. It says, maybe opened officially. Well, we're going to officially open it. Oh, your camera doesn't like focusing, does it? Geez, it's the camera. That came quickly. What was that, seven times quicker than it expected? Yeah. Look at it, it's look heavy as well, look. How many LEDs is it? 20? 30, I think. 30. I'm going to read you a verse from the instruction manual. This product employs CCD CBOS image sensor. Can be matched with lenses of a different angle, focuses or specifications according to the user's requirement. Is it waterproof? It looks yeah. fairly waterproof, actually. Yeah, it should be waterproof. We yeah. can wire it in. Yeah, let's go set it up. There we go, that's the camera. Uh, nine pound something off eBay, and they seem to be doing a fairly good job. Well, this isn't bad actually. This is a VNC of the Prusa box, and we've, we're running iSpy CCTV software. See how dark it is outside. Everything's running from the mains at the moment, so what I'll do is I'll just simulate a power cut. VNC still running, time still rolling, network still live. Do you want to restore power? Yeah, okay. Fine. 
float charger is now installed just there and connected up to the batteries down the end and the job is done that is our UPS CCTV system I've just written some shut down instructions there in case someone else needs to shut it down and I'm not here very simple power off the inverter using that switch on the front and then go downstairs and disconnect the main supply by unplugging that. Okay, thanks for watching the video. Goodbye. Well, we're back here the morning after. Just going to check the voltage coming out of the batteries. It's been on float charge all night. We have got 12.44. Hasn't gone down too much, so the inverter's just been on standby, fully powered with no load on it all night and this, uh, this little 2 amp power supply has just been keeping that running and keeping the batteries topped up ok I'll now show you how everything is wired up inside our UPS using this diagram now um, when it's finished I'll scan the whole thing in and uh, put it online so you can download it and uh, you might want to watch this bit in 720p now the first step with this is to connect up the batteries so what we'll do is we'll take, we'll imagine this is the positive terminal, we'll take a wire off of that, of each of the positive terminals of each of the batteries, and connect them all up. I'll just draw us a key. The red is our positive from the 12 volt batteries and black is the negative from our 12 volt batteries. I could have called that black ground but I'm not going to. <clears throat> we take a negative from each of the batteries into an earth block. These are both earth blocks, eight, eight way earth blocks. You could use four way earth blocks I suppose if you were using less batteries. Obviously four on each side gives you a total of 8 connections which makes it a bit difficult for 8 batteries because then you haven't got space to put any outputs on right, so that's our batteries connected up and we will now connect the mains so this is our mains input that's just from a socket on the wall and from that we connect our live to this extension lead our neutral to this extension lead and our earth to this extension lead. Okay, what's next? So from this we have got this socket here and this socket here. This socket will go to this float charger. So we'll take a live from that into the float charger and the neutral from that. Now there's not a lot of point in taking an earth to that, but you could if you really wanted. This is a bit more cable. And from that, we would have a negative output, negative 12 volt, at about sort of 2 or 3 amps we've used. That'll go into this earth block. And then your positive. into that earth block. Now optionally, we didn't bother, but it might have been a good idea, you might want to put a diode in that, just so that uh, when the mains fails you don't have any current going back from the batteries into this float charger. Now you'd think they'd have a diode built in, but 
you know, that to be safe and sorry, so you might want to put one on there. Next step is to power our inverter. This is probably the simplest step. Positive from the earth block goes to the positive input on the inverter. Negative from the earth block goes to the negative on our inverter. Okay, right, we're going to connect the relay up now. So we'll have a live coming out of this bug. Going into this contact here. Can't really see that very well, can you? There we go. And uh, same with the neutral. Got a neutral coming out of this. So I've labelled these NO1, NC1, NO2, NC2, NO3, NC3. Now you could use a um, double pole, double throw, 240 volt relay for this. We've used a um, three pole one because uh, you could optionally switch the earth, which we haven't done, but you could. Or you could switch your inverter on and off using this other switch here. Completely optional. But uh, if you switch your inverter, you may have a bit of a delay while the inverter warms up of a couple of seconds, which uh, as does unfortunately. So we want an instant. We're not going to switch the inverter. We're going to leave that running all the time. So this float charger will overcome the draw of the inverter and it will keep the batteries evened out voltage-wise. So NO means normally open and NC means normally closed. And that's just, these are switches in the relay, they're spring-loaded to the normally closed position. When the coil gets energised, it will turn into an electromagnet and pull all these switches to the normally open one, like that. Alright, we'll take our power from the inverter, now the power output from the inverter. We'll go, with our live. Neutral, do the same. Goes into NC2. And from that, we then have our output. So our output socket, so our live output goes to the output sockets. And our neutral output goes to the output sockets. In its current state, if the main input was live, we would still have our output sockets connected to the inverter, if you follow it. Follow the live, it goes across there and that's connected to the inverter. That's because we haven't energised this coil yet. So if we take a uh, live just off of this one, this is the uh, input plug for the UPS. Connect that to one side of the coil and do the same with the neutral. There you go, that's a bit of a better view of the relay. Then this coil will now be powered. So uh, that means every single one of these switches will have gone temporarily like that while the coil is energised. So live is on, coil is energised, all these switches are pulled down. Follow the live again. That is now connected to the mains. So while the mains is on, the output sockets are powered from the mains. When the mains fails, this coil loses energy and the magnetic field goes away. So all of these switches are spring-loaded back to the NC position, the normally closed position. And then the output sockets will be, in that case, connected to the inverter. And it switches over pretty damn quickly. It doesn't turn the computer off the duration it takes to switch. So I'd imagine it's sort of somewhere around in the milliseconds range. And I think we're nearly done. The other thing we've got to do is earths. Now, this top switch could be used for three purposes, I suppose. You could either have it switching your inverter on and off to save, save a bit of power from the batteries. 
you can have the inverter turned off when it's not needed. But uh, then you'd have a problem when the uh, mains does fail. All your switches will flick over. The output sockets will be connected, but the inverter will still have to warm up for a couple of seconds. So you would have a bit of a power drop there. Which might not be a problem, it depends what you're powering. So uh, we've decided against that, we're going to leave our inverter running all the time. The other option is a switched earth. Now uh, if your inverter has a, um, a earth screw terminal on the back of it, then you could um, <coughs> have an earth going into that and then uh, switch the earth output to the output sockets. But we decided against that, we used a uh, earth loop. So how we did that is we took our earth out of the plug, it went into the output sockets, it then came back out of the output sockets, went into the plug of the inverter, now optionally you could put that into the screw terminal, then it came back out of that, and back round, and back into the plug. So we've got our earth loop, which means we've always got the output sockets connected to the earth, just for a bit of a safety feature. Other safety feature, you could put a um, circuit breaker on your input socket in case there was a fault on any of this you'd have your um, RCD in your house that would trigger if there was a fault and you could have a um, circuit breaker in case there was a fault <coughs> and I think that's everything alright that's the uh, basics of the UPS connected up this is just a uh, CCTV sample from uh, daylight nice and clear you can see all the cars coming and going Thanks for watching the video guys, if you've got any questions pop them in the comments and if you like the video press the subscribe button. Now if you'd like to build your own UPS system I'm going to be posting a instructable soon with some more details on how we built it and uh, the full price. Well, I did a running total, it came to £52.55 and we had some components like wire and the creeps laying about at home, but, uh, things like the batteries, uh, 50p each, earth blocks. Um, and the cheapest place to get them was a tool station. They came to £3.92, relay was £4, and uh, in that cost I've included the inverter, the camera, and the, all the other CCTV equipment. We had the Prusa box already. If you had to buy a computer for it, it probably would have cost you a lot more. And uh, the same goes if you bought a true sine wave inverter, which would give you cleaner power, but costs a few hundred quid. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Goodbye.